Oh, hello. Didn't see you there. Welcome to Cheerful Guitars. <laughs> My name's Chris. Behind the camera is Matt. As always. Uh, where are we at? We're on the 3,000 year old guitar today. And what we did in the last episode was we put the curving in, and the episode before that we did the arm bevel. So what we have left to do is one of my least favorite parts of the guitar build, and that is radiusing the back and radiusing the top so that it can accept the back and the top. For those of you who maybe don't know, I think most people in the audience do, but for those of you that don't, that the back on an acoustic guitar has actually got a little bit of a dome to it, and the top actually does too, in most cases. There are some people that build on completely flat. Charlie. <laughs> Try it. <laughs> There's one piece that you want in particular. You're kidding. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> okay. Yeah. <laughs> so those those of you that don't know, the back on an acoustic guitar actually has a radius to it, and in my case, I do a 15 foot radius, which is a good way to visualize what that looks like. Would be to uh, take a 15 foot in diameter beach ball and drop it in the sand and what you would have is a radius that looks like the radius dish that we have here um, and on the top of the acoustic guitar in my particular case I put a 30 foot radius on it so the top has what would be the equivalent of a 30 foot beach ball dropped into the sand it's a very slight dish the reason why we do this a is because that's how I've always done it. I know how to tune my guitars correctly based off of that radius. Um, the other part about it is adding that dome to it actually adds strength to it. So we remember when we did the voicing and the gluing on the braces of the top, we actually put that dish, that radius into it. So it allows us to have a stronger top um, while being able to bring the braces down a little bit lower. So that's kind of what it's there for. So what we need to do today is actually, a lot of people call this driving the bus is we're going to take this whole body inside the rim and we're just going to take this thing back and forth and put that radiusing into the back. I usually do the back first and then I do the top. The top is a little bit more complicated. but uh, So that's what we're going to do. I have the guitar in the mold, as you can see. This is kind of, at this point, it should be in the mold and kind of in the mold until it's ready to come out fully closed up. At this point, it shouldn't be moved around at all. Um, this is a 15-foot radius dish. And I've actually got it screwed down to my workbench. One of these days, I'm actually going to build a machine that will spin this for me. There's there's people who are, who make those, and it makes this job a lot easier. But for me, I get to suck it up, Buttercup, and do this thing. So here's how I go about doing this. You can see it's not even close to flat yet. I will actually put some um, some weight on here a lot of the times just to make this job a little bit easier. Um, and I need to make sure that we're fully fixed in place before we get too nuts. Um, and we're just going to start taking this thing and just going like that until I'm dripping with sweat in all my places. <laughs> all the places. <laughs> should do it. I am going to put my hearing protection on, not because this is loud, but because it's like nails on a chalkboard. Matt will also put his hearing protection on, so the camera's gonna get a little wobbly. Uh, yeah. And then we're gonna uh, we're gonna fire this thing up. <sighs> bring on the suck. <laughs> What's that? So bring on the suck. Yeah. So yeah, we just kind of I, I get to a nice place where I can get my knees bent nice and good. Going at it. Things to consider here are um, when you glue on this solid curving, like I had mentioned, you can pre-radius the, the radius, the back, and the top so that you can glue your curving on a little bit more close to the contours of what the back are going to be. And the reason why you would do that, it's not a big deal, it doesn't bother me, so I don't care. As you can see how thin the curving has gotten here. This is fully sanded down to its correct radius now. Um, so that's it's fine. It doesn't need to go any more than that. But if I were to um, pre-radius it, then glue the curving on, I'd be able to match that a little bit better so we have a little bit more even curving. 
um, I'm not really that concerned about it. It's not a big deal. So what I'm doing now is I'm coming and I'm just doing this upper section of the body. The lower section is now done, the lower bout. <laughs> and now I'm doing the upper section. So it's just, once again, keeping the weight on it. And you wanna be careful that you don't take off too much on one side or another. What I'll do as I get closer to being done with this thing is I will start checking the depth of the body. It doesn't have to be perfect, perfect, but you wanna keep it obviously very close, you know, within a 10th of an inch. Um, to itself as you move around so that you don't end up with like a, a one half of the body way thinner than the other unless you're doing that on purpose for like a man's or wedge or anything like that that's can be a building technique that some people use as you can tell it's tiring <laughs> so the back is the easy one yeah. uh, especially because the back doesn't have any bevels on it as we do the top the bevel is going to start coming into consideration but but keep going at it keep going I've also noticed that I'm gonna take some time and scrape off some of the glue squeeze out from the the, um, the, the curving that we put on or the, the lining, as we have been told that we need to call it now. Because <laughs> it has no curves in it. Yeah. <laughs> okay, so I think I got it mostly there, but before I get it absolutely perfect, I'm gonna pull this spreader out because I do, I'm noticing more glue squeeze out than I thought. So uh, before you were archer radius this completely perfectly, you do wanna make sure that you are getting all of the squeeze out done first because I have to pull the mold spreader out in order to do the scraping off of the glue. That's why. So I hope that's pretty self-explanatory, right? Yeah. You don't want to you don't want to radius it until it's in its place and you're not going to move it anymore. It's not going to move much here, but I do want to give it just a little bit of a cleanup. Okay, so Matt turned the camera off for a minute while I just cleaned off some of that glue around the kerfing, and it occurred to me that I need to actually do the radiusing on the back side of this arm bevel before I put the, the um, spreader back in. Because once again, like I said, if we're going to put the spreader in, we may need to make sure that that's the last time that we put pull it in or out. So what I'm going to do is I've just cleaned up all the squeeze out glue. Um, and then I'm actually going to take some sandpaper and clean off the insides of, the, of the, um, the lining that I put in. And then we're actually going to go through and shape down the arm bevel uh, foundation that we've already put into the guitar. Then we'll be ready to put the uh, spreader back in and be able to radius the top. And at that point, these this will be a completed rim and ready to go for us to glue the top onto it. So, um, and it's, once again, it's important that you keep these your linings really nice and clean because remember the sound hole when it goes on here, you're going to be able to see, especially on the lower curving, you're really going to be able to see down into that. And if there's any squeeze outs and stuff like that, it's just going to be ugly. You want the inside of your guitar to look just as good as the outside, um, just like your soul. <laughs> so we're just going to clean this up a little bit, get rid of any, any sort of marks that were left on the linings uh, from the clamp up. I'm just using 120 grit here, and on Spanish cedar like we've got here, that goes real fast. Oh my god, I'm sweating. <laughs> like dripping in sweat. The heat index outside right now is 114.3. That's what the outside thermometer is saying. So. Well, it's the last point three that really gets. It really, there. it's a, it's a wet heat too. That's the good news. It's sixty three percent humidity. Uh, it's it's cooking. I told yeah. Matt today we were we went outside and I was like, is, is it because I've been living in Florida too long? But the heat index was one hundred and four, and I was like, it feels a little bit folly out here. It's like kind of. Do you smell pumpkin spice? Yeah. <laughs> <Jesus>. <laughs> it's just a good chance for you to go through the whole guitar and the whole rim and make sure that it's nice and clean because it's only going to get much more difficult from here to have the guitar prepped and cleaned. Like there was a little bit of splatter on here from something from my workbench and just kind of sanding it off. So once again, before I glue that on, what I need to do, and this is really just to reduce weight. This is kind of a little bit gnarly looking here too. This has just been glued in, but we can get rid of this hard edge on here. So this is kind of a pain in the butt, but there's not really an easier way to do it that I've been able to figure out, including, you know, people online haven't been able to figure out a better way to do this either. But I'm gonna take my thumb plane and my other hand planes and just start knocking this thing down and radiusing it by hand. I just, I don't know an easier way if you have one. Let me know, because I would love to be able to put like a router in here and put like a round over bit on it. It just won't work. It just won't work. So what we're left with is being like a barbarian and coming in here and it like, it just, there's just no way easy way around it. Because like half the time you're going with the grain, other half the time you're going against the grain. Uh, and it becomes this really fun balancing act of trying to not 
give up on the hobby altogether. <laughs> <laughs> it's actually not too bad. Another reason why using basswood is really nice because it just goes really fast uh, to get this knocked down. Sometimes you get these and they're like, the grain direction on the actual bevel piece is so in a weird spot that it's almost impossible to do this. Here we go, it's done. We'll make this look nice and easy on the on the video because it's it's not gonna be. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Hold on. <laughs> All right. So I think yes, the bevel is now nice and radius and sand. I took it. I started out with a sixty grit. Well, no, you saw me do the thumb plane first, and that was working okay. Um, and then I kind of got sick and tired of it, and I switched over to my DA sander and went with the sixty grit, and just started hogging material out. <laughs> uh, so we started hogging material out with the um, the 60 grit and took that to 100 grit with a DA sander and then switched over to it by hand and then I just took it down to 180 um, because it's basswood. It went nice and quick and it looks really good now I think. And you can see it really, you don't have to do that. I was telling Matt like this is kind of an unnecessary step but it, it matters in how the guitar looks and sounds I not sounds it, it matters on how it looks on the inside and that and that matters um, and it also ties in very perfectly now with the kerfing that's on the top section here as you can see it's so that's a perfect transition all the way to here and so that's good these um, these linings are nice and sanded so what we can do now is we can put the spreader back in and make sure that it doesn't need any touch-ups on the back. So we'll probably just give it a couple of passes again on the back just to make sure that that radius is nice and, and, and smooth. And then we're actually gonna switch over and do the top with 30 foot radius. So let me put that in and I'm gonna actually gonna get the dust collector and suck all this sawdust off because the sandpaper becomes pretty ineffective when it's packed with sawdust. <laughs> so we'll do that real fast. Okay, now. We're back to where we started out. I got a little ahead of myself premature on the front end of this video. But now we are where we start off. The back is nice and radius. It's got no gaps here whenever we get it to that point. No gaps here, it looks really good. So now we've got that nice 15 foot radius on the back. You can kind of just see it, right, as we mm -hmm. as we catch it there. And that's what, that's what you want. You want that nice, clean look where it gets tapered towards the top of where the neck is. I think, um, for me, a tail, a tell on a really amateur guitar, a lot of the times is that really chunky look where it's just a perfect rectangle the whole time. It doesn't get any narrower at the top. Um, so that's something to think about as you do this. But so once again, we put the kerfing on, we sand it, which you would want to do because we did it in a little weird order here. You'd want to, uh, if you're doing a bevel, before you radius it, you want to go ahead and radius the inside of the bevel, clean off any sort of glue out and smooth out the, the, the linings, then do your radiusing. So our back is finished now. So what we can do is we can remove um, this 15 foot radius and I'll switch over and put my 30 foot radius on here and we're gonna do the radiusing of the top and there's a little bit more involved there. But I think that, right Matt? Matt's never done this before. So I, you feel like you got how we do this? Yeah, put the wang jangler on the spank fangler. Yeah, and, and uh, you and wanna you turn the do towards the hickey. You do some weird, uh, yeah, <laughs> turn the dude towards the hickey, do some funny dance moves. Uh -huh. Let me think, I might need to get a whiteboard for this. Yes. Okay, so when I built my first several guitars, as well as I know so many other people have the same issue, so. What you, what you naturally want to do when you radius your top is to just do like we did the back, right? We're going to get a 30 foot radius and we're just going to put a 30 foot radius on here. Makes sense, right? Like why, why would it be any different than that? But it matters and it matters because our fingerboard extension comes over here and touches this whole area. And if you were paying attention when we glued the top together, when we did this, you'll remember that we did not put a radius on the transverse brace the ever so controversial transverse brace. We, it was totally flat right there. And there's a reason why, and you're gonna to start to see that come together here. And the reason why is, so let's pretend that this is that guitar body, right? We're gonna draw two of them. Here's our, here's our back, here's where the end pin goes, here's where the neck is. So let's, I'm gonna exaggerate here. Let's pretend that we put a 30 foot radius across this whole thing. What happens is that we end up with that where that neck is, right? Here's the neck. 
and the fingerboard does that, right? And then it has to go up, essentially. I'm exaggerating the crap out of it, but it gives you the good visual, right? So what ends up happening is your strings come across here and you can easily have buzzing situation right here where the bridge is because it, it, it just doesn't want to connect. See what I'm saying? So what you actually need to do, and Martin and Taylor and Gibson, all those guys have a way of doing this that, that that's all automated and it makes it a lot easier. But for those of us that don't have the big, those machines are like the biggest machines you can humanly get and they just take up a lot of space for a job that you can do by hand. But let's draw that neck again. And what we're gonna do is we're at the same thing here, obviously the lower bout or the, the bottom of the guitar. What we need to actually do, I'm trying to think of a way that I can draw this nicely, is make sure that this section up here is flat. And then the radius, the radius actually is here. We're gonna radius that section. Basically from here down is gonna have the radius on it. So we, on, if we take that, and the reason is, is because that allows us to have a perfectly flat fingerboard there and mm -hmm. allows this whole section to meet nicely with where the saddle is on the guitar. Those are terrible drawings, but I think it got the point across, right? <laughs> yes. I think it helps illustrate kind of what we're talking about here. So let's take that ugly drawing and transfer it over to here. What are we gonna do? If we were to radius this whole thing, then where that fingerboard goes, it's gonna be pointing up essentially. So what we need to do is basically, ra I always kind of visualize it radiusing just the lower, lower bout. And then this upper section is gonna be flat. So I take actually a flat piece of granite and I, or a flat piece of wood and I, I make this area totally flat. But what I do first is the radiusing of the lower section. Um, it was when I started doing that that the geometry of my guitars really started to dial in a lot better. You'll hear like um, the 14 fret hump um, and other terminology used for it. And I think that that's always an issue. It could just make the dialing in and the final setup of the guitar a real pain in the ass if you don't take that into consideration. So just something to think about. You can get away with radiusing the whole thing and you can get away with, do, you can do a whole completely flat guitar, flat top. Some people use 60 foot radiuses. Some people use 25 foot. It's kind of, there's pros and cons to it all. I'm sure that the comment section will be lit up with different recommendations or thoughts on it. But just like I've been saying forever is come up with a system that works for you and repeat and refine your system, figure out what works for you. 30 foot and 15 foot radiuses were kind of like the standard when I started building. I think it might be what Martin and Taylor uses. Um, but I trust it, if I'm gonna go out and change the, the, the radiusing on my top, it's gonna throw everything off for me. Like everything else is now out the window, so I don't mess with it. Um, so that's just food for thought. So what I'm gonna do first is, remember when we glued on this arm bevel, it's, it's obviously sitting incredibly high here. So just to get started without sanding, I'm gonna um, just take my hand plane, my large one here, and we're just gonna, what's that noise? <laughs> Sorry, it'll buff out. And we're just, gonna, we're just gonna start knocking that down a little bit. The reason I'm using a large one is because it's gonna keep everything averaged out for me. If, if you're not doing an arm bevel, then obviously this would not apply. Okay, that just took us, saved us a little bit of time. That's the only reason why I do that. Okay, now I think we've got a nice even spot. Don't go too far on that step. If you're doing arm bevels at home, don't get too crazy with this hand plane because you go too low and you create all kinds of problems. And my biggest thing is you're gonna have a tendency to wanna start knocking this down, putting that 45 degree angle on this bevel now. Do not do that. If there's any, don't put a bevel on it until I tell you to, if you're following along at home. If you put a bevel on there too soon, you're gonna get yourself in a real big pickle when it comes to gluing on uh, all your bindings and perflings and all that stuff. Uh, I, it's not even worth trying to explain. You'll see it when we get to that point. So just don't knock that down yet. All right, so now that sits nicely in here because we've already, we've already matched the radius, right? So we're sitting good. This thing's not gonna wanna slide around because it matches that, that radius. So what I do, is I take like some sandpaper like I have here. Well, hang on, hang on. I'm gonna knock these down just a little bit. You'll see why in a minute. All right, so what I tend to do is I'll take some of my old sandpaper that has the, um, specifically the stuff that has the, uh, 
the uh, hook and loop back on it. Or, actually better yet, I'll take some of my sandpaper that has the, sl the slick back on it and I'll set it right here and it's gonna not slide around too much because it's, it's adhesive on one side, or because it's gritty on one side. And then I will take my 30 foot radius and I set it on top. And the reason why I've got that on there, that piece of sandpaper, is to protect that upper section. Remember, I don't want to be sanding it. So it's just going to act as keeping this sandpaper from touching. But it is touching on this lower section. So I'm going to take it, I'm basically going to pivot, pivot from this section right here, and I'm going to go back and forth like this. And hopefully, yes, <laughs> that shouldn't be touching. If it touches a little bit, that's fine. Uh, but you just want to keep checking to make sure that you're not sanding too much off at all on this upper upper bout section of the guitar. And I'm just going to be working on the lower section here. It should be, yeah, typical. It's a, it's a lot higher up on the bevel side, so. <laughs> Check your work. I'm sure there's a better way to do this part. I haven't quite sorted that out yet. It's good times. It's good times, folks. So, what we have, I hope you can see it, is right around here. Let me grab a um, let me grab a white pencil so you guys can see what I'm seeing at. Well, I'll just point to it. So what you can kind of see right here, starting right here, is basically where the sanding started. And you can see how we've got our kerfing, our laminate piece, and our outer piece. It comes all the way around, and it does the same thing all the way to it right around here. So our radius is right around from here all the way down. So this whole thing should fall away very gradually, very, very gradually. <sighs> oh, man. Uh, we're going to hit this with a dust collector real fast, and then we'll spin this thing. Actually, you know what? Screw it. We're not going to do a dust collector yet because it's just going to be a problem. Um, the next thing that we're going to do is we are going to get this section nice and flat. So we basically want to sand this whole upper section so that it meets that point where we just drew those pencil lines. So it's flat and then radius. I think that makes sense, right? Yeah. Yeah. This is what's worked best for me. I know that there's gonna be a lot of people who say that's not how it's done. Remember, there's no way how it's done. This is how I do it. Your mileage is gonna vary. Uh, it's what has worked well for me. It's worked well for me. So uh, let me grab, I think I recently switched to a different sanding method. Let me see, hang on, get one more here. I was gonna show you guys how I do this. I actually lost the other one, but I actually, somebody gave me all this engineered bamboo boards. The really cool thing about them is they're really great for making things with on the CNC machine, but they're dead, dead flat. Like, absolutely. These are like, I've had these for two years and they've been sitting in the shop and they're just perfectly flat. So the reason why I point that out is because I can use adhesive back sandpaper and then use it as a big sanding block. So I just do that. I take that, um, we did that short video a couple of weeks ago. The uh, YouTube short where I told you to go out and buy the Kling Spore five pound box of sandpaper or the 15 pound box. This is what you get really good adhesive back sandpaper. So I'm just going to make a new one and I'm just going to stack it up and we will be off to the race. All right, so I got 60 grit on here. I did want to point out that you can't really do this with plywood. The bamboo engineered board works perfect because it stays flat. If it's plywood, it might have some bow to it. So you want to make sure whatever you choose to do this with, that it stays flat. Something that I use for years is you can get little um, cutoffs of granite, like one inch thick pieces of granite from a, a local countertop store or even at Lowe's or Home Depot. Um, those work really well. The nice thing about those is they're really heavy. Um, but yeah, so what we're going to do is really get in here and then do this. The thing you want to make sure, that the, only, the big caution that I want to give you is that you want to apply your pressure on, on the, the neck side more than you apply it on this side because what can happen is you can create a low spot here and we don't want a low spot. You want to kind of feather this in. We're, we're meeting the radius section and the flat section right there. I'm super uh, uh, exaggerating these. This is just a very slight bulge we're putting into it. I just gotta get this side a little lower. It's a little high because of the bevel. So this side's already basically completely flat. Also wanna use a straight edge to make sure that you're not getting a, a giant bulge in the middle. So it's a little high right now. So we'll, we'll make sure that we get that nice and flat. Okay. 
Okay, I think that's gonna do us. Um, something I did when we were off camera is this, because there was a little bit of a hump there. <coughs> uh, just the slightest of one now, just the tiniest little guy. Is you can take a large hand plane, if you're using the fingerboard extension, which I recommend you do, one that's wide enough to kind of go across the whole thing here, and you can very gently knock that down and get it nice and flat. You want to kind of come at it from two angles so you don't get a bunch of tear out. But I definitely recommend doing that to get it nice and flat. You don't want to you don't want to bulge in the top. But I think we are there. Let's uh. Let's take all the dust off of this real quick. Let me show you one more thing. Yes. <laughs> nice. Nice. Okay. Are we recording? Yep. All right, so everything looks really good now. My I was telling Matt, like, I, this is my least favorite part, but once you're done with it, it's one of my favorite parts because, especially when you use a laminate sides, because what you end up with is just such a clean look. It's just so nice and, and clean looking. You know, just not a lot of braces or anything, and you've got a rim that is now ready to accept the top and the back. It just looks really, really good. I'll spin her around just so you can kind of get a good look at that. Um, I'll, I will obviously go over it in any little spots where there's glue still showing and get that all cleaned out. The last thing that I do, and I recommend you do this as well, is this is a, one, of those, one of those little things that you can do to help make your guitar sound just a little bit better, is I actually don't leave my tail block its full thickness right here because that's dampening the top. That's a big chunk of wood that's gonna dampen the top. So what I'll do is I actually run it, put a taper on it, and I'm gonna get it to the same thickness as my kerfing. And that way, it's the same thickness all the way around. It's just something that's gonna keep that top from being so tight. Uh, um, and it's not something I can prove that makes the guitar sound better, but I promise it doesn't make it sound worse. <laughs> so I do it on the front, sometimes I do it on the back as well. I tend to just use a hand plane and come in here and start knocking her down. Um, you can use a, um, a 45 degree uh, router bit if you want to. This is just just as quick if you're, if you're quick with it. Being careful, you're kind of going this way and that way so you don't get a bunch of tear out. Let me switch hand lines real quick. My little, my little dude. It's looking way better. So, we've got that knocked down. Then I take this little piece of sandpaper here. I always have like random pieces of wood with sandpaper stuck to them. <sighs> that does it. I think you can see there how we now have that glue line is just going to be that much smaller. That makes to me that makes a substantial difference. It's, it'd be almost like having fingers just holding onto the edge of the guitar top, and now we've reduced that by quite a bit. So, whew, we're done with that part. <laughs> Normally we have the AC running full blast in here, but it's loud, so <laughs> we have it turned off for this video, and you're welcome for it. Um, <laughs> so what we need to do in the next episode is we're gonna begin getting this top ready to mate. In fact, we are gonna glue it down. We're gonna get the top glued to the sides of the guitar, which is gonna be super exciting. So the next episode, it's gonna be way less kind of monotonous stuff, and it's gonna be more exciting things. It's really gonna start to come together, look like a guitar, I hope you guys are learning something. Uh, I appreciate everybody who's been who's been a part of this 3,000 year old series. It's been great. If you're just joining us now, remember we've got this is like our 13th episode, I think. Something like that. We've got a whole. This is we're doing every step of the way on this guitar build. So if you're enjoying this, go back to the beginning and watch it. It's really it's really a lot of fun. You can you can skip through it if uh, you've already built a guitar and just kind of hopefully pick up some tidbits. Um, we appreciate all, appreciate all the support. And um, yeah, what else? Um, please like and subscribe. We appreciate you guys buying t-shirts. We're about to cross the 16,000 subscriber mark and that's super exciting. Um, we are, uh, we've had a couple people request that we add a little link to our Patreon. So we're gonna be putting that in the description of this video and all of our videos. It's just gonna be there if you'd like to support us. We appreciate it, it helps us grease the wheels. And uh, yeah, man, we'll, uh, we'll see you here probably in about a week when we come back for this for the next episode of the 3000 year old guitar build. Thanks guys. Thank you.